okay today I've uh, left the old abandoned railways and for a change we've come out to, to the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Heritage Steam Railway Stanway Viaduct site um, I'm sure you're probably aware if you're a railway enthusiast there's a uh, an appeal underway to raise 1.5 million pounds um, for essential remedial repairs to this viaduct. The problem they've got is the uh, drainage system on the track beds failed or is in the process of failing and uh, it's starting to affect the uh, structure and uh, indeed the safety of the entire structure. I'm going to have a look through here Nice to see a steam train going through. I timed that just right. There we are. That's the southern end. Beautiful viaduct. Um, so, statistics 656 feet long. This particular viaduct um, at its highest point. 50 feet off the ground, 15 arches, and built of Staffordshire blue brick. Um, it's difficult to pick out structural issues, to be honest, and the light's completely in the wrong place. But if I zoom into that point, just above that uh, little gap in the parapet wall, have a look where the arch tapers and joins the pier. That's the sort of issue they've got. That's water ingress off the track bed, blowing the bricks. Um, probably due to frost damage. Where are we? Due to frost damage. So, uh, I say 1.5 million pound to uh, future-proof this bridge. Otherwise basically it will be uh, declared unsafe, closed and the GWSR will, will use, will lose um, a major uh, financial uh, service um, from, brought from the Broadway station end. So there we are. Um, I'm just going to shut down a minute and move to another location. I'm going to take it up from there. And there's another view looking south again. And that's through, I think, 13 of the arches. There's a slight curve on the, uh, on the viaduct. Um, this end doesn't look too bad. Although, if you look at it, I don't know if you can see that. There's water dripping from that arch. In fact, it's not dripping, it's running quite fast. So that's the issue they've got. Just stop that one there a minute. What's the remedial works then? So they take up the track, they take up the sleepers, they take up the ballast, they then clean the track bed. They lay concrete um, in such form as to make sure all the rainwater goes down the catch pits and not just anywhere. They then put two protected layers of waterproofing over the top of the concrete. They relay the ballast, and the sleepers and the rails. Um, while all that work's going on on the track bed, of course, we've got issues with uh, the brickwork. That, inquire, that requires skilled brick layers, um, requires scaffold in such forms to be safe for those brick layers to work at any height, and uh, hence the price tag, I guess, of £1.5 million. Pounds. Have a look over on the other side. 
Yeah, there's the last two arches going through going through to the embankment. Um, I believe six of the arches had uh, some remedial works in 2020, um, but obviously um, that was only minor works. So let's see if we can get a look from this side, but I think there's too many trees in the way. Down there, oh, you can just about see it through the trees. There you go. I say it's a beautiful structure, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, it must be preserved at all costs. So, so I'll put a link in the description for the uh, GWSR website if you can donate. Doesn't matter how small, cut the quid. Every little helps to keep this viaduct open. And there's a source of that dripping water that is at least coming out of the, of the uh, proper drainage pipe so maybe that's uh, as a result of some earlier remedials. So look across the sun's exactly in the wrong place again as usual. Abutment then coming in from the north from Broadway runs over this. Uh, this is a uh, a bridle way into I think it's Stanway Grounds Farm, but obviously it's open to the public, and I think you can walk right through to the uh, to Stanway Village. There it is. Comes off the. Uh, Toddington to Broadway Road. Right, let's move back so we get a good uh, side shot of it and I'll give you some of the hi history of the, the actual line. Construction commenced. Um, with the uh, with a 50-man team of navvies um, laying the 12-foot uh, foundations for the piers. Um, the work was well advanced by the end of autumn with all the piers and arches uh, in various stages of completion. However, things were soon to take a dramatic turn for the worst. On Friday the 13th of November at 8.15 in the morning, without warning, number 10 arch collapsed, bringing down with it a 14-ton steam crane being used to bring up timber and bricks from ground level. On hitting the ground, the crane smashed into many pieces. However, the crane driver survived um, and was extracted from the uh, cab of the wrecked crane and placed under number 9 arch while his rescuers attempted to reach another man crushed between the main part of the uh, smashed crane. However, suddenly number 9 arch collapsed, burying the crane driver and four other men. 40 minutes later, number 8 arch fell in. The following morning, a Saturday, crowds had gathered to uh, view the spectacle being kept under control by the local constabulary. Just as well because at 4pm the ring of number 7 arch collapsed and number 6 arch developed a severe crack as a result. Temporary shoring was then required for arches 5 and 6 to prevent further collapse. In the end the casualty figures were 4 dead and 7 injured although that figure could have been much higher because the previous night 20 casual workers had camped under arch number 10 only leaving the site at 8 o'clock in the morning the following morning. 
uh, 15 minutes before the, the arch collapsed. The subsequent inquest returned a verdict of accidental death, although the contractors did agree to pay compensation for loss of life and injury. Prime suspect for the collapse was an oversight in not laying enough temporary track across the arch from pier to pier. Thus the crane's weight was not spread evenly across the newly built arch, even though removing the wooden former a week earlier had not resulted in any suspect structures. Um, it's to be noted that the uh, crane driver actually died of his injuries because he was buried under arch number nine. He died of his injuries four days later in Winchcombe Cottage Hospital. It was also noted at the time that soon after the tragedy, a great sadness had descended on the surrounding communities. Okay, the line opened in uh, 1904. Part of a line from uh, Cheltenham through to Honeybourne on the uh, old Oxford, Worcester and Wolverhampton line. Uh, crossed that and uh, went on the Honeybourne to Stratford line. Um, the line closed to local traffic in 1960 and uh, some of the smaller stations in the Holts were uh, also closed. However, um, the track remained open for through trains um, and these were uh, running from 1908 to 1968. Um, it remained open for um, freight and uh, also diverted uh, passenger services until 1976 when it closed completely, um, eventually taken over by the Gloucestershire and uh, Warwickshire Heritage Steam Railway. Um, the track over this viaduct was relayed by the DWSR in 2005 and the first passenger train crossed in 2010 um, on its way to Laverton. Broadway opened uh, I think 2017, 2018. So it's had quite a long and uh, fairly checkered history. Um, the section of line from Broadway to Honeybourne um, remains, what will I say, in the pending tray of the GWSR. Um, I would like to think they would um, adopt it, purchase it or whatever and reopen it, but in the current climate and uh, with a hefty bill for this viaduct, um, I think I think the possibility is becoming more remote by the year, which is a, a shame. Um, I'm going to try and have a look at that section, um, if I can get in there. Might have to wait till the winter. Um, it would be nice if it did open. I believe all the bridges are intact, obviously, um, pending the reopening by the GWSR. Um, and I believe there's a footpath that runs through it. There's very little uh, infrastructure left. I could say all the, all the smaller stations cl had closed by 1960. Um, but it would not be nice to think it, would, it will reopen at some point. Um, the line from Honeybourne to Stratford uh, was also um, possibly going to be uh, reopened, but I think that's completely fallen by the wayside and that is now um, a cycle and walking path for what they call the Greenway that runs through from Stratford um, to the northern side of uh, what was um, Longmaston Station site which is now uh, being used by uh, another company so yeah it's to be honest I can't see a lot wrong with it here um, but up close I guess there are issues with the arches and uh, 
various load bearing points on the viaduct so um, somebody's obviously inspected it and decided it's uh, got to have some money spent on it in order for it to be uh, allowed to continue in use. Well there you go, that's uh, Stanway Viaduct in all its magnificence. I'll just take a few more shots and then um, I will catch you all on the next one. Don't forget the uh, link to the GWSR in the description. I'll see you all very soon.